Um, I'm Matt Wimmer. I'm a, a senior principal engineer in the solution engineering uh, at Open Gear. Um, my background is pretty much I've been a network engineer for 20, 25 plus years. So I, I'm at Open Gear, but my background is network engineering. So uh, um, what you're going to see is some of the uh, extensibility and the flexibility of the Open Gear products, uh, things you can do thinking outside the box rather than your typical uh, running Ansible or your Net DevOps CI CD pipeline type things that not everyone. Uh, not all IT shops can do. Sometimes your IT shop is three network engineers and a couple of guys at help desk. Uh, so, you know, these are some things these small shops could possibly do or, or even bigger shops. Um, you know, and then leveraging Open Gear to de deploy some custom, uh, custom web apps to help enable these, these operators. And then using Open Gear to, to basically virtually deploy this to any rack or any kind of app or solution to any rack uh, with an open gear product in the in the rack so just to set set the stage a little bit on actually deploying uh, a docker container so basically what we've done what I've done today is I put together an app uh, Python base using flask uh, G unicorn to basically render Python output into a web page and so what you're going to see is uh, CLI output into a page. So it's pretty simple. Uh, so we've done uh, we've done demos in the past where we actually showed how we've deploy you can deploy these apps from Lighthouse. And so pretty much what we're using today, what I'm using today, is I'm using our IP access solution that's part of Lighthouse uh, to remote into Lighthouse, which is I have my uh, Lighthouse actually hosted out on AWS. And so I basically create a VPN tunnel to AWS into my Lighthouse and that can access the remote node, uh, which actually is in Florida. Oops, wrong way. So there's the deployment. So actually to accessing, you know, kind of like what I said, the, the app is actually hosted on a, a OM down in Florida, and then we have some devices that are hanging off of it. I, for this demo, I have a Cisco router and a Cisco switch, a couple small ones. Um, like I said, I'm tunneling to AWS, and then I'm getting to the actual node uh, in Florida. Let's see here. All right, now, talking about the story. Um, so basically this first story here is just a typical help desk trouble ticket comes in, help desk receives a, a, a call saying they can't access the file share. He does a, he basically replicates what the customer's trying to do. He can't ping, he can't access the file share. And that next thing he does after that is he escalates to the network engineer. Network engineer gets a trouble ticket. He looks at the trouble ticket and the, net, the help desk basically just said, well, I can't ping. And you're like, oh, geez, I'm on call, and I just got called, and you didn't help me out any. Uh, so, you know, some of that is because they they don't know any better. You know, they don't have the access to those tools. So they don't know how to log into a, to the CLI. Uh, they don't know what to collect or access, or maybe your IT sec policy says help desk can't access uh, these devices. Um, so, you know, some, some ways to, to make it easier for everybody for the network engineer and help desk is maybe you create something that's easy that can not have to have CLI skills or you know in many different vendors uh, to access the device make it easy put it on a web page everyone knows how to use a web page and hit hit select and go and it prints something out uh, and you know not everyone knows how to run Ansible playbooks and you definitely don't probably want your help desk doing that for you and it, you know, it just helps cut down on some of the some of the simple things uh, that can probably be el eliminated at the help desk before it gets up to a network engineer. And the big piece is, you know, now you know if it's something really bad, that guy doesn't have to drive in. That on-call network guy doesn't have to drive in to the location to do the troubleshooting just to find out somebody's cable was unplugged or his power supply was out. Uh, this is just a kind of an overview of the app that we're running that I'm going to show show you guys. Um, 
it's just a basic uh, Python Flask G Unicorn setup. It's hosted on a Docker container uh, on one of our OMs, and the OM has a serial connection uh, and IP con or Ethernet connection to uh, Cisco ISR and a Cisco, just a small Cisco Catalyst uh, 1000. So it gets serial access and IP access. But basically what I did, here you got this main menu. You have, here's some basic commands that are using SSH. And let's say uh, you don't have access, you know, maybe it's out and they only have access locally and you're at a different site. We also have a serial selection here. So they can actually serial in, maybe the device is out. Uh, and then you can actually enter in, I, I made a one that where you can actually enter in uh, commands manually, in case it's not in the predefined list. And then we'll get into four in the next story. So clicking on this, you can see I have my two devices. There's a drop down. Okay, I either want to look at my router or my switch. I'm going to look at the router. Okay, let's look at our there are quick interfaces, uh, show IP in brief, hit go, and bam, you get that right up there. And no one had to log into anything. Uh, he can output that, send it, put in the ticket, and look, everything's good. And you, and let's do one for the switch also. So I'm gonna do a show LDP neighbor, go, and bam, there it is. There's some devices. Okay, everything's up and running. Copies that, sends it, or whatever they want to do to it. And then let me do. Uh, let me do this. So here we have the serial version of this. So it takes a little longer because these are the serial two serial connections. Uh, they're connected to our. OM and ports 21 and 23. So if I go over to my OM right here, it's it made me log in. I know it's on port 21 right here. It says it's my Cisco 1111 router. If I go back. Let's do. Uh, Let's do a show version. Then what I'm going to do is also I'm going to open a SSRI serial connection through the web GUI just to show you that it's actually working and I'm not a, this isn't prescripted. <laughs> so there's the command prompt. Sorry, it's small. All right, so he's logged out here. And now what you'll see in the serial session is the actual input that the app is actually doing. And it shows everything and then it'll log it out. And bam, now it's rendered into the app. So, so a question on the, the demonstration of the serial question, uh, connection. What's accounting for the buffer of that output? Is that is the open gear device accounting for that or are you accounting for that in the application in this demonstration? It is. It is the, uh, it's not the application, it's basically the open gear. It's the, it's the serial session. All I'm doing is very simple. I'm writing that output to a log file and then I'm rendering that output into a uh, web page. Okay, got you. So you're writing it and then that's where yeah, it's being yeah. redisplayed. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So very simple, put together. So, uh, and the code you're using to, or code, the parts you're using for this are available easily on the internet somewhere to try to make that happen? Or do you have a document that helps explain or show this? Um, yeah, there isn't really, uh, yeah, we don't have that out there. We do have a GitHub and we'll probably put some of this out there on the GitHub, but the, the app itself, the, the, it's, it's uh, NetMiko, it's NetMiko login. So if you know how to do any of the send command timing, send command files, it's, that's basically all I do. And then you do some, Py, you know, some tricks in Python to write to a file, read it and, Using Flask, you output it. So it's pretty straightforward. All right. What's a typical deployment of these devices? Like, um, like we talk about serial, and we've you know, we've all had a serial server for a million years. Sure. It's just a node somewhere in the management network. But is there do companies typically 
still use their management network to re to access all these devices over the IP, via IP, or is it? Do you see any other any other design problems? Excuse me, security problems with you know having a, a device that can access everything again, right? Um, yeah, I mean it, it depends on you know you see enterprises where they have they still are using the, or they use a management VLAN, and so obviously you're tied in. You're going to have to plug this into your management VLAN, which is physically still part of the production network. And then you're seeing a lot of customers still push for uh, a completely separate out of band, mm -hmm. physically separate networks. And in that case, uh, yeah, I mean, you're still you're still part of a network, but it's not touching your production. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know, more traditional, just just the node, right? Just the one single IP address of your device versus now mm -hmm. that thing is connecting outbound versus being connected to right and the traditional scene. Right. It's just in uh when it's in, in band or you let's say you have a management VLAN, yeah, you're connected in. It's just a one IP. It's just like any other device that's out there. So right. uh and then any access serial access is like any other traditional uh console server. You know, they yeah. we, we map a SSH or SSH port to the ports, so. All right. So let me go, let me flip back to the slide deck. Let's talk about the next one. So the next, the next story basically is, uh, you know, we have iperf test nodes, so you can use the OM because it's, you can put Docker out there. You can use it as uh, test nodes. And as Ryan brought up earlier, is sometimes you have the shadow IT of people putting uh, Raspberry Pis or small, those little small Intel Nooks or something like that out in their networks to run as test nodes. Or even, even not worse, but sometimes you have to send somebody physically out with a laptop to, to troubleshoot what's going on there. Um, this is an advantage of having the open gear device and being more than just the console server. Now you, you can run some of these things you would typically do uh, with a piece of hardware that's already there. Um, so, you know, here's our story. We have a customer out, out, all down in Florida. Uh, so, you know, somebody complain. you know, you get a complaint from a remote site saying it's, it's slow between Florida and Nevada. Uh, you know, so the network engineer on duty wants to run some quick tests, throughput tests uh, between, but there's no IT staff there and he doesn't want to fly down there and it's critical because the store can't run. Uh, so, you know, here's here's a way you can run iperf and you don't have to use an app. I just put it in the app. You can actually just run it in SSH and do it the old fashioned way. Uh, or if you have uh, Ixia, you know, you're running Ixia or a thousand eyes or something like that as agents. So you put agents out on the, on those nodes. Uh, but for our purposes, I just use the iperf because it's easy to show. And so here's just a quick look at our setup. Uh, we have two OMs connecting a couple routers to the WAM. Uh, uh, back to the Nevada OM, which is running as the server. So just a quick point-to-point -point setup. So right here, we got the same setup here, and I already have it predefined. So I'm just going to hit run, run iperf, and you'll be able to, it takes, it's basically running, uh, for 10 seconds. So what's happening in the background is it's deploying the, uh, the script is actually deploying the Docker container. The Docker container is ready, but it's not deployed or it's not in uh, a build state. So it deploys it, that takes a couple seconds and then 10 seconds from the test and then tear down. And then what you see is basically your standard iperf output will get rendered on the website. So a quick question again on, on connectivity here, right? This application that we're seeing is connecting to Lighthouse, right, in AWS, or is it connecting directly to the Open Gear? This app, this app that's running, these are actually, that's actually on the OM. It's on the OM. Yes. Okay, gotcha. So the I'm website using, we're seeing is, is on the OM. Yeah, and what I'm doing is I'm using a v, basically a VPN to connect into Lighthouse, which then gives, using our IP access, uh, tool, which gives me a connection down to that OM to basically run this. If you're local, if you're local, you know, you would just connect without, you, you could just connect locally to that uh, open gear device. Okay, gotcha. So it's a VPN connection to the OM 
right, to if you're run going, this. Right? right. If you're going if you're going through Lighthouse, let's say you're in a different site uh, and you need access, yeah, you can just VPN to Lighthouse with the tool with our IP access tool, which then gives you access down to uh, the operate the OM. Okay. So would that work uh, if you've got a small remote office, one box that you're managing, and you really don't have any kind of management network? Can you put this box directly on the internet and it'll lock itself down just to a VPN or? Um, so if you want your connection, you could set up, you can actually set up a connection directly, a uh, VPN connection directly to the OM. There is a feature that lets you set up, basically, it's basically a strong swan VPN that if that's exposed, you can, you can access it. Okay. Uh, if you have Lighthouse, you can use Lighthouse. Lighthouse, what, what happens when it enrolls in Lighthouse, it creates uh, basically an open VPN connection. So it's encrypted. Uh and that's initiated from Lighthouse or from the device? The, uh, it is initiated from the device. Light, Lighthouse is basically listening. Okay, so, so this will work behind a CG NAT environment or something right. like that. Right, as long as you got the right port forwarding on, it's just like I said, it's just IPsec and OpenVPN. Okay, but if you've got no ability to port forward, you're, like you're, you're behind a carrier grade NAT where they're not letting any ports in. It, yeah, it'll be fine because you're, you're, you're initiating. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But there's no, there's no, you've got it firewalled sufficiently that you could put this thing on a raw internet connection and you're not going to have to worry about it. Right. Great. Thank you. Yep. All right. Click main. And that's pretty much, those are the things we were going to walk through. Uh, we did, I did want to circle back to, we had a question about the API and the port, the, uh, port labeling. So actually the API does show we do have it documented. Here's here's one. Here's our ports endpoint. This is actually for the API for the OM. Um, the get the get will actually show the label here as a required string. So that it's going to when you get your output JSON output, that's you're going to get that label. And this, this, this documentation for the API, it's available out on our internet. And if you need a link, we could provide that to you, no problem. Did you say that the demo application that you've built is available on your Git or maybe OpenGear's Git? We'll put it out on the OpenGear Git. Okay. And they're, uh, they're actually out on the OpenGear Git. Also, to answer another earlier question is, there are some examples of Ansible playbooks out there on our Git, our GitHub. So... Is there an interactive version of this uh, demo out there, like the API documentation that you're showing? This right here, this? Is this interactive or is this just uh, a series of screens? This API right here, this, yeah, it's out there on the internet, so. Uh, is, is it interactive to the point where like there's test data on the other side where I can kick the tires on it? That I don't think so. Okay. Do you have virtualized versions of some of these products we can develop against? Because sometimes getting real hardware to test against is always a challenge. What I'm getting at there. Yeah. We we do for internal testing. I think there's one version of the VOM or our virtual OM that uh, we're working to make available. So I know I can virtualize Lighthouse and e EVNG. I've done that before for doing customer validations, but I have hardware at home. But being able to code stuff like this and prove it to a customer before going on their network would be right. a huge win. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, we do have we, we do have those tools for our products. Uh, it's just a matter of getting those into a state where it's it's e they're easily deployable um, and they're not super easy to deploy right now. Or even something like DevNet where it's hosted on your platform that we could query against it so it doesn't have to be exposed to us, but yet I can still develop against it to show customers sure, what sure. we can and can't do. Or to pre-build, right? Like you were saying, before you go on site, you could just pre-build a bunch of stuff, walk in, push. Yeah, I mean, because even when I'm trying to develop stuff for customers, I want to make sure what I'm doing is going to work and not break something like you're saying. It's part of the adoption is getting the trust. Right. And if we have no way to show them the trust, it's hard to build the trust. Right. Um, yeah, like I said, there we, we were in the process of working on, I know, the, the virtual OM uh, to get that ready, you know, so you can use it out and, and develop against it. Uh, you know, either on Azure locally or AWS. Yeah.